ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's September 6th, 2017, and we are looking at the precious metals from a technical basis in this series of videos. This is Christopher Aaron, and I do thank you for tuning in. We are going to be looking at the most important development of the past week for precious metals investors, and I can almost guarantee you that you have not seen this discussed yet anywhere else in the financial or the mainstream press. I can almost guarantee it. If you have seen this, I'd be very interested. Maybe you can share a link to let me know who brought this to your attention. Uh, I think this is the most important thing that we are seeing right now in the markets. This is analysis that went out to premium subscribers a few days ago, and I want to share it with everyone because I think it is so important. It's going to be important to follow too as we go forward here. Before we get to that, we always start by looking at the spot prices of gold and silver. If there's anything we can discern from the short term trading action here, Wednesday's trading here in green after pretty much an off day uh, on Monday. At any rate, the US markets were closed for Labor Day and the Canadian markets. So today, Wednesday being this bar in green, Anything above 1300 for gold, and it's still looking good in my book, we could in fact see some sort of a dip uh, intraday, maybe for 24 hours below 1300 to scare some people out. Uh, I doubt that will happen, but that's the level that I'm watching. 1300 in that vicinity, 1290. I want to see hold on any weakness here. Looking at silver. Uh, consolidating here with gold, silver has got its own short-term technical support and resistance levels. Uh, it's just bouncing off different levels, but it is following gold basically as far as a general trajectory goes. So we have to focus foremost on gold, the international historic store of wealth, and then silver will be following it, sometimes lagging and sometimes leading. What is the most important thing that we have observed over the past week? This is what I want to bring to your attention. It's the relationship between gold and the Japanese yen. <clears throat> and you might be thinking at this point, well, who cares about the Japanese yen? Well, if you're a precious metals investor, you should care. So here is the chart, one on top of the other. Here we're looking at the Japanese yen to US dollar cross pair. And this is multiplied by 100. So we're looking at uh, 100 yen to a US dollar. And here we're looking at the price of gold since the 2011 peak in gold. Now, if you just take a step back from your computer and look at this, you will start to notice some very interesting correlations here. This correlation between the Japanese yen and gold is quite striking. It has been for the last six plus years. Let's look at a few specific data points. For example, the all time high in gold above 1900 from September 2011, corresponding very closely with the all time high here, uh, at least for this cycle, I should say, the cycle high here for the Japanese yen versus the US dollar. Look at the big drop in gold prices from 1800 all the way down to 1200. A $600 drop in gold over about eight months here, corresponding with this major drop in the value of the yen. And look at the, for example, the surge from the end of 2015 here in gold. This is the one where a lot of people have become interested in gold corresponding with this surge. You can even see the little Brexit spike corresponding and this sort of choppy action to round out 2017 here across both assets. So let's get rid of these shadings here for a second. And one more time, just take a look at this. Pause the video if you would like, if that helps. Look at this correlation. And there are many theories as to why this correlation has existed so much over the last six years. Uh, 
I've seen people discuss the yen carry trade. I've seen the yen proposed as a safety currency, uh, even more so than the U.S. dollar. And so when gold is being bid up for safety reasons, the Japanese yen is also being bid up. So there's, there's various reasons as to why this can be happening. The bottom line, though, is that it is happening. And I think it's much more important to focus on what is than necessarily to always have 100% the answer to why. There can be dozens of reasons why, ultimately. But this is, and this has been. So there's the correlation, plain to see. It should be apparent that if we are precious metals investors, we should pay attention to what is happening with the Japanese yen. Another way to view this is not one on top of the other, but as a ratio. So here we are looking at the Japanese yen to US dollar cross pair as a ratio compared to gold. So it's the exact same data, it's just presented as a ratio. And what this chart is showing, now this is over the past 20 years, from 1998 through the present. When this is moving up, it means the yen is gaining strength on gold. When this is moving down, it means gold is gaining strength on the yen. So we can see very clearly here a period in the late 90s through the early 2000s when uh, gold was losing value versus the yen. And then more or less a 10-year bull market in gold prices versus the yen. And something very strange here, from 2011 to present, shown by these converging blue callouts right here. The yen and gold behaving as the same asset class. Let this sink in. This is what we were just showing on the last chart. We were showing one on top of the other, and here we were looking at it as a ratio. Anytime you see a ratio between two different asset classes such as this, that have had a dramatic move like this over the course of a number of years, and then it just flatlines like this, it's telling you that these same two asset classes are being treated by the market as the same. And we can disagree with that fundamentally. We can say that gold prices are not the same as a fiat currency issued by the Central Bank of Japan. We know that that's true fundamentally. But the point here is really to show not what we know fundamentally, but what is the market saying at present? The market for the last six years, within a range of about 15% here, if you look at the y-axis, the market has been saying that the Japanese yen and gold are more or less the same. You could have bought Japanese yen six years ago and you'd be basically the same as you are with gold today. Now, this isn't going to last forever, but it still is occurring now. Now, here is that data point that I wanted to bring to your attention. This is the most important thing that has happened over the past week. We're going to zoom in to the last year and a half here, since late 2015. And we're going to look at this flipped upside down. So not Japanese yen to gold, but what? Gold to Japanese yen. This is the price of gold in Japanese yen. And what do we notice here? This is a clear breakout above the 2016 high for gold as priced in Japanese yen. Now, I know we don't have a whole lot of followers here from Japan. If you are, hello. And so... If you're just looking at this sort of casually and you're saying, well, who cares that it's breaking out in Japanese yen? I'm in the United States or I'm in Canada or Great Britain. This is why you should care because what you are seeing here is the beginning of the severing of this 
highly correlated behavior between yen and gold that we were just talking about. You're seeing here gold rising even when it's priced in yen to a new high above its 2016 high. This is significant. So when we move that back down, we can still see that even with that surge here, it places us into the lower range of this boundary here. But this is getting ready to break. I don't know if this is going to happen this week or next month or perhaps early 2018 or so. But the reason why this is so critical is because when this ratio breaks, when you have these two asset classes being considered the same, and this breaks, which it looks like it's going to break down in favor of gold. When this breaks, gold is going to be left as the safety asset of last resort, not the Japanese yen. And everyone, I see it. We see it in comments for videos. We see it in comments and articles that are posted. So many people today strictly believe that if you just follow the relationship with the Japanese yen, you will be able to predict gold prices. And what that breakout is showing us is that this is getting ready to sever. When that happens, we are going to see the strongest advance in gold of the past six years because it will be acting on its own. It will be receiving safe haven demand separate from whatever is happening with the other safe haven that has been acting as such for the last six years. So what does this mean as far as practical terms go? Watch this ratio very closely. When we see a breakdown of this lower trend line, get ready because gold is getting ready for a major surge across all currencies at that point. This could be happening, like I said, within the next week. My estimate is that by no later than the first quarter of 2018, we are going to see this break in sudden fashion. Thank you very much for watching. I did want to share this with you because I think this is going to be really critical for the next year, year and a half for precious metals investors. It's interesting to think about why this happened. Why did we see gold break out in Japanese yen terms? What happened last week in Japan? North Korea fired that missile, uh, which landed over Japan in the Pacific Ocean, and then they tested a hydrogen bomb. So we see what's happening amongst investors in Japan. In a crisis situation, investors in Japan are not moving into their own currency, they're moving into gold. This is critical. Something else that we saw last week was that investors worldwide moved into gold, not the US dollar, not US long-term bonds. Now this is short-term action that we're talking about, intra-week action. One week does not make a long-term trend, yes, I agree. But sometimes when we get a few weeks in a row like this and we start to notice breaks above important 2016 highs, this is telling us that these markets are getting ready. They are beginning to change their behavior from what we have seen over the last six years to something new. And this is what we follow every week in the premium service. We look at indicators like that and a number of other indicators we also look at the individual mining equities, the GDX, the short and the long term for gold and silver, and the commodity complex. Every week we do that in print and also in video a couple times a month. I also work with individuals by voice and by email. If you have a unique situation and you would like someone's perspective who is not only going to tell you every single week, to buy, 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 because I do think in certain scenarios for certain individuals, perhaps it's time to sell or diversify or change your holding to some extent. I think there is merit to that. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I will see you this time next week. Watch that relationship between yen and gold.
this could get very interesting over the next six months.